have down there at uh, Either Street Wynnum. Yes. What are some of the things you can take? Well, there's lots of yeah, there's lots of medicinal mushrooms that there's heaps and heaps of research on that. Medicinal mushrooms, so because they actually boost lymphocytes, lymphocytes are antiviral. So you know, a lot of people get viruses like Epstein Barr virus or Ross River virus or that sort of thing, and then you know, there's nothing medically that they can do really for antiviral. The antiviral medications have such big side effects that most people don't want them. So anyway, medicinal mushrooms are amazing. So we've got several of those sort of products. Things like good old vitamin C. Having a thousand micrograms of vitamin C every hour during the worst of your cold and flu because that flushes the system so that you're boosting more of the white blood cells than ha- than the speed at which the bacteria or viruses can replicate. What about Manuka honey? Oh, that I love Manuka honey. Level. Yeah. Now, I bought some the other day in Melbourne uh, at Queen Victoria Markets. Yes. And uh, I was dying to get into it. I put it in the fridge, but it all crystallised. Ah. Is it ruined? No, no, no. You pull it out, it'll uncrystallise once it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it will. It will. It'll be fine. All right, I'll take it'll a be fine. In the day, keeps the doctor away. It does. Um, speak about um, Eka. That's uh, on right now. They're expecting, I think, first day thirty thousand people. Oh, I hope it goes well. Well, I'm... look at the weather. You couldn't ask for a better day, and they predict uh, very similar weather over the weekend. Oh, it's just looking gorgeous, so, isn't fantastic. it? Fantastic. And uh, cheap rail fares, folks. If you're thinking of taking the family, you get a family pass. But Queensland Rail have uh, cheap fares from here at Cleveland right into the Eka ground. So um, inquire about that with Queensland Rail and make sure you keep the sniffles away. If you do have a sniffle, don't go. Yeah, you just spread those germs. The flu has absolutely skyrocketed this year. I think 40,000 plus people diagnosed with the flu and probably more to come. Yeah. Now, let's go on to something serious because we could talk about the Eka all day. Um, Depression. Yeah, so we did... Versus Hashimoto's. Exactly. Now, I've heard of Hashimoto's, but never really realised what it was. Yeah, so last week we talked about depression in men particularly, and so it's been in my mind a bit this week, and I started... I was part of an e-course over the week and I was seeing all these similarities between depression and Hashimoto's. So the course was on Hashimoto's, but as they were talking, I'm thinking, gee, a lot of people have these symptoms who have been diagnosed with depression. So I made up a list of the connections between the two and then I started looking at how often there's misdiagnosis going on. So for a start, everyone knows what depression is and I think it's estimated that one in five people will suffer depression in their lives. So, you know, it's it's not a small thing here in Australia. It's, it's it can be it's really like debilitating. In the world, it's huge. Yeah, but absolutely. You can climb out of that dark, dark hole as, yeah. as uh, Winston Churchill referred to it as the black dog. Yeah. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a thyroid disease. It's, so the thyroid is a gland that's in your throat and most people have never heard of Hashimoto's until they get diagnosed and they only get diagnosed if they've got a doctor who really is trying to find underlying symptoms. Because, and I say that because on average, it takes the average person five to 10 years to get diagnosed and generally five to eight specialists. So it is very miss, it, it's not found. 52% of people who have depression are actually misdiagnosed Hashimoto's clients. Who discovered this? Uh, Mr. Hashimoto, wasn't it? Uh, well, it was a Mr. Hashimoto actor. I'm sure he was a doctor. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so... So that's, that's huge. Yeah, so it what it is... Misdiagnosed. Yeah, and it's an autoimmune disease of the thyroid. So just say you're tired, you're going to the doctor, you keep getting checked with all your usual things like your iron and your white blood cell counts and your thyroid and everything keeps on coming back. How common do we hear this, that everything is perfect in the blood tests? So... Unfortunately, there's there's a few things that go on there. Firstly, the range for TSH. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. And the range is 0.5 to 4 or 0.5 to 5.5, depending on the pathology lab. So pretty much anywhere within that range is considered normal. Now, the problem with that is that optimal is about 2 in fact, optimal is under two. And I heard about 10 years ago, 1.84. So that's what I'm, someone said that at a conference once. So, so I've always been aiming for that for my clients. So that, but it can take 10 years. And this is the problem. It can take 10 years for your body to go from two to five. So because your thyroid is an amazing gland, it wants to help you. It does things like actually grows. 
so that it's releasing more hormones so that well, you feel you better say, for I longer. Think women suffer more thyroid problems than men. Five to eight times more than men. Yeah, because you can see that little golf ball yeah. develop in the throat of uh, a Exactly. Lot of so it's called a goiter. Yeah. And a lot of people have what's called a goiter stripe, you know, so it's almost like a little collar, a you know, yeah. around around their throat. And they might just think of it as like a fat roll or something like that. But I see it in thin women, you know, it's not something that's ne- it's not to do with obesity, it's not to do with weight. It's because the thyroid is actually growing. So you can't really remove it surgically. Oh no, doctors can remove goiters, and quite often, uh, one of my clients actually give you an imbalance. Absolutely, definitely, and in fact, a lot of underactive thyroid is considered easier to treat than overactive thyroid. So overactive thyroid is called Graves' disease. Great name for that one, thank you, Dr. Graves. So, (laughs) so. Yes, so overactive thyroid, it, it's more dangerous and damaging because it's when the, it's the thyroid being hyperactive and overstimulating, which means you're in a position where your foods, your bugs, your, the cells of your body are being attacked by your immune system at a really fast rate. That's still happening in Hashimoto's, but at a slower rate. So, so that, Graves' disease is a, it's further down the line. It, not necessarily. You know, and this is the thing with people with thyroid issues, and this is why they need the correct diagnosis, because people with thyroiditis can be misdiagnosed as, say, bipolar syndrome. There's all, I can't remember what percentage it is, but bipolar, of course, gives you those highs and lows in mood. That's exactly what Graves' disease and Hashimoto's does. With Graves' disease, you're feeling anxious and stressed and you're losing weight and you're hyperactive and you can't stop and you're going to all these doctors and they're checking everything for cancer because you're losing weight at the speed of light and your eyes well, they start... They pull out another tablet and say, take two of those exactly. rather than one. Well, the number one thing that they do with Graves' disease is radiate the thyroid. So, so basically they give this um, radioactive iodine, so they inject it into the thyroid. Um, but the reason they do that is to destroy the thyroid. They do it to destroy the thyroid because it's easier than to put you on a thyroid medication for underactive thyroid than it is to treat the overactive thyroid. But then you're going to be on medication once you've For the rest the of thyroid, your life, yeah. absolutely. And the other thing they do with Graves' disease is just remove the thyroid because, of course, you don't need it. So, no, they say that it's being, you know, it's being naughty. It's a naughty gland when it's playing up. But what it's trying to do, it's all to do with stress or infection or the underlying reasons we get Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. If they're not looked at, long-term, you can end up with things like uh, heart problems and other mental health issues and birth defects and chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and irritable bowel, major depression. So there's some massive, massive things um, when the, when it's not diagnosed. I was just looking at one of the um, symptoms of Hashimoto's here. Um, waking up feeling tired. Oh. That, that really points to a lot of problems, doesn't it? Uh, it does. Sleep apnea yeah. comes to mind. Yes. And, because, and sleep apnea is very much to do with breathing and lungs and weight and heart and all sorts of things going to sleep apnea. It's not a simple yeah, well, thing. The, the doctors have come out and said very clearly, black and white, it does lead to either stroke or heart attack. Yeah, so, and and it can be a sign of thyroid problems. And and because I, I'll just, uh, I had some blood work done recently. I'm very proud of myself. First time in 26 years, I actually went to doctors and had a blood test. And it was funny because I asked for my thyroid to be checked and my TSH was 2.8. Now, if I was any of my clients, it's within the range, but to me, that is a sluggish thyroid. And I went, hmm, that's interesting. Um, but I was considered euthyroid, which is, that's EU thyroid, and that's considered normal. And the other thing that was checked was my free T4. Now, T4 is inactive thyroxine. T3 is active this thyroxine. This is the chemical produced by, but the, by thyroid? the thyroid? By the absolutely. Yeah. Now, the drug that we're given when we have a sluggish thyroid, uh, which so many Australians are, it's... In America in the last three years, two out of the last three years, the number one drug that was sold was thyroxine. So, you know, going back 10 years ago, the numbers one and two drugs being sold were antidepressants and cholesterol drugs. So it's amazing 10 years later, it's thyroid. Huge. They're saying that 28 to 38% of us have have thyroid issues and most are undiagnosed. No, most of the autoimmunity to do with the thyroid is undiagnosed. So consider my two tests. So my free T4 was 14, it's supposed to be between 10 and 20, and my TSH was 2.8. Now medically speaking, that yeah, absolutely, and the doctor said basically, yep, you're perfect. And I go, hmm, okay. But 
I've chatted about this before I work my butt off to maintain my yeah. weight. I'm constantly exercising, I'm constantly on a diet and I do it because I like to look good and I don't want to oh, Madonna, not <laughs> So I so I do, I work hard at it. And I know some people who don't and I've always just been jealous of them. But it's making me want to go and do a thyroid panel just out of curiosity because one of the things that was also found in my blood was that I do have HLAB27 gene, which is, it gives you a predisposition to autoimmunity. So I want to go and check my free T3, which is the active thyroxin. 20% of people with HLAB27 don't convert T4 to T3, which means that you've got the inactive in your bloodstream, but your thyroid can't act actually activate it into the active form that gives you energy. What, in our lifestyle, what um, causes problems? Is it diet? The way it's a bit of everything, stress? absolutely. Uh, so it's things like old infections, things like Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme's disease, Ross River virus, that sort of thing. Last page, Roger. Um, yeah, so, and basically those sort of things. Massive nutritional deficiencies, uh, particularly things like iron, B12, uh, zinc, selenium, iodine, that sort of thing. And also things like um, wheat and gluten are probably two of the biggest things. And it's not, e it's not even so much that they're bad foods, although, you know, they're not the best things for us if we've got an autoimmune disease. But wheat and gluten, because they're genetically modified and adjusted in all sorts of bits and pieces, that puts pressure on your immune system. If you imagine that you've got Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, an autoimmune disease, it means your immune system is ADHD. It's looking at everything in your bloodstream and trying to attack it and fight it to keep you well. So your body is getting things like chlorine and fluoride out of your water and, and the thyroid sucks it up. So it's got, it's got uh, its messages mixed up somewhere. Absolutely. So it's too many heavy metals. It, it's the wrong sort of diet, really. And I know this sounds boring, but it's the autoimmune paleo diet that needs to be done initially, which means taking all the great things out of the diet. <laughs> you know, it's basically thinking, okay, well, even if you just started getting rid of dairy and wheat and sugar and uh, coffee, that would be a huge step in towards right in the right direction. I, I was looking at some of the um, symptoms of uh, Hashimoto's disease. Brittle nails. Now, yeah. you hear a lot of women talking about, oh, I've cracked another nail at the drop of a hat. Yeah. You hear that a lot. Also, hair loss, uh, enlargement of the tongue. How large does the tongue get? Yeah. And it can be really swollen and sore because, once again, it's an autoimmune disease. So the tongue is such a great indicator of how our health is going. So quite often... When I think of it, I don't do it with everyone, but you know, when I get them to poke out their tongue, you can see scalloping on the edges. That sort of indicates real dehydration. It can be fat and swollen and pale. It's a huge muscle, isn't it? It really yeah. is, but but it really gives a lot of information about iron, about potassium, about silica, lots of things. And loss of libido. <laughs> we don't why want. Do you, why do you laugh? <laughs> well, <laughs> particularly. I, I thought I had lost it, but not since you've come into the studio. <laughs> I haven't got special So we, yeah, so with the libido, you can imagine what the thyroid is. It's like an overall metabolism organ of the body. So if the thyroid is sluggish, it makes everything sluggish. Your digestion, your sex organs, your yes, sex course. hormones, your, it really does. So it can affect every single system of the body. That's funny, it affects both depression and Hashimoto's, uh, affects the libido um, in the wrong way. Yeah. And um, it complete opposites, depression, um, increased appetite causes weight gain, but also you can have unexplained weight loss with yeah, depression. So you really can. If someone overnight loses a lot of weight, yeah. ask them. Yeah, How are you feeling? and given it takes four to seven minutes for most doctors to prescribe antidepressants compared to five to ten years to get a Hashimoto's diagnosis, imagine if you've got an autoimmune disease, an inflammatory condition like Hashimoto's, and you're given antidepressants. It means you're not treating the inflammation, you're not treating the immune system. Those things are going to keep on in the background, really making you feel very, very unwell long term. And taking chemicals that aren't really doing any good no. to your body. And uh, I think the statistics for depression is that after 12 months, it's 3 to 7% of people are in remission for depression. So whereas if we're depressed and we do things naturally like exercising and sunshine and lots of sex and, uh, you know, things that are good for us and increase our, our health and well, you're vitality. <laughs> so, so when you do, do the healthy uh, things to improve depression, quite often it's only a three-month 
sort of bout of depression. So it's quite different to the medical route, which of course people can take three to nine months just to find the right dose of drugs. Now, if let's say uh, I've got, let's say it's me, for instance, and I, I'm suspicious that I might um, feel down, I might have depression, but I've heard about this Hashimoto's yeah. disease. Can I drop into 94 Eva Street Women? Can you do a test? Yeah. yeah. So what we do, we sit, we can do, we can do the usual things we do in the clinic, like look at the blood and the oligo scan. So that sort of lets us know about the stuff like B12 iron. Uh, as well as all the minerals and heavy metals and toxicity. So from that perspective, we've got the test covered. But from the lab tests, we send away to a place um, that basically does a full thyroid panel because you've got to get the antibodies tested because you need, you need the free T3 tested, like I mentioned before, because free T4, you might have plenty of that, but if you're not converting it, you're still going to be exhausted. So the T3 T, can you explain that again? So what T4... T4 is thyroxin, so yeah. so it, uh, so basically it's the inactive form of thyroxin. Yeah. T3 is the active form of thyroxin. So basically you need to convert the inactive to the active, and we all have inactive and active, but we need to, but it's toxicity and inflammation that stop that conversion. In so if you've, way. yeah, so if you've got Hashimoto's or Graves' disease and you're being given a synthetic form of the inactive thyroxin, your poor little body just has hardly any hope of converting that. So you need those, and you also need reverse T3. Reverse T3 is a, another one. You need to have a doctor who's willing to, to do these things because quite often they won't. So unless they find that you're out of whack with the T4 and, e, and TSH, they won't do further yeah, tests. It takes up too much time, I guess. Well, that's sort of why we do some of the bloods because, you know, so we send it away. I think our cost price is like, because we just charge what they charge. I think the test itself is maybe 185 bucks, and it's 35 bucks to go to QML or someone oh, and have the blood taken. That's pretty good because so we're talking about depression. We are it's a very serious problem, and it it's can last weird. forever, you know. And if people don't know they've got Hashimoto's, the depression's going to get worse. New Leaf Natural Therapies at 94 Eater Street, Wenham. The telephone number Madonna is three three four eight six zero nine eight. And we'll come back to Madonna right after this.